Welcome to the Adam Does Movies Podcast. I'm Adam. Today I want to talk about actors. Specifically, the importance of their roles and characters they play in films. Are they untouchable sometimes? Do they need to be replaced in others? Can they be replaced in some? That's what I want to go over. The writer's strike is of course going on and the actor's strike is now happening. What do we do next? We start building these people out of AI? We start creating animated versions of them like they did with the new Indiana Jones film. We have a spry young 80-year-old Harrison Ford getting de-aged so that he's in his mid-30s or early 40s. It's, um, it's a weird time. It's a weird time to be alive. It's a weird time to be an actor, I suppose, and to be a fan of movies in general. Because as I get older, I start to see some of my favorite you know, on-screen heroes start to age up a lot. I mean, I, I, my wife watches the Sylvester Stallone TV show. I guess it's not his. It's his daughter's show, but he's in it a lot. Not sure what it's even called. The Stallones, probably something very uncreative like that. Anyway, it's a reality TV show that follows his beautiful girls and him. And man, it sucks watching people get older. It really does. That's, that's Rambo. That's Rocky Balboa who's carving a pumpkin with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Those guys used to be rivals back in the day. They were fighting for roles. That's the Terminator showing him how to take seeds out of a, a damn squash. It's, it's, it's sad. And um, it's, it's even more important to kind of look back on the roles that they were in and, and discuss what we do about the futures of these properties. Are we going to see another Terminator in 10 years? That's going to be a reboot of the James Cameron masterpiece. We're going to get that Back to the Future remake. Probably going to be on Marty McFly's daughter or, you know, whatever they end up doing. Well, Robert Zemeckis and his buddy, uh, what is his name? I wrote it down here. Rob Gale. They still own the rights to this. Robert Zemeckis said, over my dead body at one point. And so Hollywood's just waiting. They're like, we can wait. We can wait, but we'll get there. We always get there. Yeah, so I thought it would be fun to kind of look at specific characters, specific properties, and talk about the actors involved and what a great job they did, first of all. And secondly, how they made it almost an impossible task to do a new version. I'll touch upon some movies as well, but mainly I want to talk about the actors themselves because of what's going on right now. And if you're wondering my opinion about the actor strike, the writer strike, I, 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 I leave it up to what I'm hearing, and that is they're not being fairly compensated. And of course, a blue collar worker or someone that works a lot of hours, like myself, obviously thinks, well, they're making a ton of money. So, I mean, I, I, maybe I should go on strike, but it's not really the same thing, is it? If you're in an industry primarily housed in a very expensive state, and the higher ups are taking massive amounts of the revenue and you're working your butt off for very little compensation, there needs to be fair play here. And I don't know enough to, to you know, just like throw out a sign myself, but I will always stand for the workers. So yeah, in that sense, absolutely, you know, get what you deserve writers, get what you deserve actors. And of course, the cynical part of all of us will say, well, movies suck now. They're not writing them like they used to. They're, they're half-assing these things. And sometimes, yeah, that's true. But I'm old enough to remember movies from the 80s and the 90s, and there's a lot of bad movies and a lot of bad writing that came out of those eras too. It's just dependent on a lot of different factors. For instance, I just watched Alien 3 a few hours ago. That movie sucks. I know some people like it, and I heard the assembly cuts better. I'm going to give that a chance. But I don't like that film. And the behind the scenes on that movie is absolutely stunning rewrites up the wazoo fox was sending right uh, rewrites on the day of shooting into production david fincher who was brought on to try to fix this mess was writing scenes while they were filming other scenes just a complete nightmare scenario so yeah writing doesn't always translate from the first draft to the final product sometimes there's eight thousand rewrites and it's even happening while the movie's being shot but let's focus Okay, there's a new Wonka trailer out right now, starring Timothy Chalamet, 
if I said his name right, he's got a fancy name. He's kind of the up and coming hotness, I guess, with the ladies. I haven't seen him in anything that I, I, I was too impressed with so far. He's in Dune. That's about it that I know of. I'm sure he's in some indie film that got a lot of praise that I didn't watch because, you know, I just don't have time for everything. But he's going to be Wonka. Now, we've had two other versions of Wonka, and this is, of course, based on the novel from 1964 by Roland Dahl. Roald Dahl? Roald Dahl? Raw Dog? I don't know how you say it. Roald Dahl, I think. He, he's done some good books. But I'm a movie guy. So I mispronounce movie characters and actors. That's, that's my job. Gene Wilder played this role of Willy Wonka so damn perfectly, I think it's foolish for anyone else to try. But try they are. Then we had the version by Johnny Depp in that terrible Tim Burton film. Some people said that it's closer to the book, that Gene Wilder went a little off script, off page. Yeah, that might be so, but man, was that performance good. I like the movie. I don't love the movie, but I love his performance in that film so damn much. And it was heartbreaking to see him. I don't know what year this was. He was definitely on a very old side of things, but he was interviewed about the Johnny Depp movie. And he said he didn't really like Tim Burton films. He likes Tim Burton, but not the movies that he does. It's not his cup of tea. And he was very down on Johnny Depp playing the character. And I'm sure, how could you not be? If you're an actor and you're working a year, two years maybe on a role, you're going to get intimate with that role. You're going to give it your all a lot of times. Unless you're Dwayne Johnson, then you just play yourself over and over again. But a lot of actors will really get into character. And when you see that in a decade or two decades later, they're rebooting the whole thing. You've aged up a lot. H how are you going to react other than, damn, that sucks. I thought I kind of had this, you know, I, 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 th I thought I had this untouchable performance that couldn't be matched or replicated. And so, yeah, you take it personal. And that's sometimes how I look at some of these characters, even as I get older with them. I brought up how... It's sad seeing Stallone and Schwarzenegger working together on a damn pumpkin. We got Cobra over here. It's, it's, it's a little tough to watch. But then I, I try to pull myself back and say, well, those movies will always exist. And it's our jobs as we become parents or grandparents and movie fans, of course, to introduce the new kids to the older flicks. To those old Rocky movies when the new Rocky comes out in 30 years and he's fighting an alien in space, we can look back and say, hey, kids, this is a far cry for what we had from Sly Stallone. And then they say, who's Sly Stallone? And, and you smack him around a little bit. Like, how dare you? How dare you, Petra? Names in the future are going to be very weird. They're going to be very different. Someone listening is named Petra and he took huge offense to it. I apologize. <laughs> So I, I mentioned Indiana Jones, Indiana Bones, as I like to say, because Harrison Ford is old as dirt. He's playing the character still. That doesn't work for me. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing, much like Rocky. Indiana Jones is its own thing. It's, it's a brand new character developed with uh, George Lucas and Spielberg based on some other things that they loved growing up. Some pulpy, serialized shows and novels, whatnot. So this is a brand new character, and they picked Harrison Ford for this dude. So if they ever make a new Indiana Jones, they really are trying to replicate Harrison Ford's performance. That is what they have. That is the source material in that instance. So whenever people say to me, Adam, why did they do this? They should have been done, and they should have recast with a younger guy. Get a Chris Pratt or a Bradley Cooper or someone even younger to play a Harrison Ford's character. I just say, why? Indiana Jones doesn't need to keep being made. Make something else. This was a character created for Harrison Ford in mind. He tried out for the role, he got the role, and he did a perfect job. I mean, he, he couldn't screw it up, right? He made it his own. I just think, yeah, Bradley Cooper can be a totally different dude with a whip and a hat and a jacket and an attitude. It doesn't have to be called Indiana Jones. Call it uh, Max, you know, Powers or whatever. So, something Homer Simpson would come up with. Set it in the same type of style. Have him spelunking. Have him taking treasure. Have him punch Nazis. That's all fine and well. 
even you could even put it in the Indiana Jones universe. I just don't see why you have to keep going with the name. But of course, it's all about making money too, right? You, you can't be that naive. And the name Indiana Jones is the, the property. That's what sells. Maybe not so much now. I don't think the new one's doing that great. But again, I think that this type of character is a young man's game. You, know, you don't want to watch a 70 or 80 year old dude whipping and jumping off things. It doesn't, it doesn't have any believability. And I know the character is pulpy, larger than life, over the top. It is supposed to subvert, you know, believability a little bit. But I got to have something to connect to. Uh, and an old guy in his boxers kind of like telling the neighbors to keep it down. That doesn't make me feel that energy that I look for in an Indiana Jones movie. And where I land on that is, just leave it. We had three amazing movies. And then we had Crystal Skull. And then we had The Dial of Destiny. So we tried, we tried keeping this guy going. And with Ford and other actors of his ilk... It really is a presence on screen that you can't replicate. We don't have the technology yet. Even through CG. It's getting close though. I mean, my god. He looked pretty good in that flash in that flashback at the beginning of Indiana Jones and the Dollar Destiny. They do some de-aging deep fake crap. It's I mean, I'd say 80 85% there. They will get it very very close to a scary degree. And if they use shadows and stuff right, I mean, it's, it's going to be more like 95% already if they play their lighting right. My point is, they keep dragging these guys out. Rocky, you know, you have Sylvester Stallone in Creed 1 and 2 even. He, he made five Rocky movies. No, six Rocky movies and then two Creed movies before he was kind of ushered out unceremoniously at the end of Creed 2. But man... Leave it alone. Sometimes we have to let the art sit. And that is the challenge for Hollywood. And it's also a challenge for viewers. Because even myself, there's a part of me that gets excited when I hear that someone's coming back. Because you have trained your brain to remember that character from a long time ago. Of course, we still have Tom Cruise out there doing it. Mission Impossible 7's out, Dead Reckoning Part 1. So Tom Cruise is going to do it again. He's going to put his life on the line for a couple spectacular stunts again. And this guy's he's in his 60s, right? He's, he's no spring chicken. Still looks fantastic, of course. He's still in great shape. But there is a breaking point for everyone, literally, when it comes to the body. And I don't want to see the man get killed because he tried to fight a bull or something ridiculous. You know, where, wherever he thinks he needs to go. But then there's that part of me that does. Not the killing part, but the fighting the bull. Or whatever he has to do to entertain us. We want to keep seeing the heroes on screen. Do cool stuff. Bring us back to a time when we were at our best. And a lot of people relate that. They equate, equate that to watching films. Oh man, I remember when Neo was fighting Agent Smith for the first time. And how cool it was. And how Keanu had such an awesome you know, look to him with the shades and the jacket. And then we fast forward all these years later to Matrix, whatever, the regurg regurgitations or whatever that terrible movie was called. And it just hits you in the stomach. It just hits you like a ton of bricks. And that's the problem now. Every time we unearth these bones and bring these guys back for one last ride, it's never the ride we want it to be. It's always so disappointing. Keaton got out of it pretty unscathed with The Flash. A lot of people... I mean, I shouldn't say a lot. I think it was pretty split if you liked the movie or not. But I think most people would say Keaton was still fantastic. His Batman was still awesome. He didn't um, kill himself in some ridiculous way or choose not to fight crime or subvert expectations like we've seen some from other properties like Luke Skywalker, for instance, in The Last Jedi. A movie that will forever be buried into my soul as one of the worst movies I've seen. One of the worst character assassinations I've ever seen. And again, there's people that like that film. That's perfectly fine. We have our reasons. We have our justifications. It's subjective. Art is subjective. Obviously, they set out to make a great movie with it. And they failed in my eyes. But that's just that's just how it goes when they keep trying to bring these guys back and treat and keep trying to change things up and make things fresh again. 
it rarely ever works. So then you have to look, what do we do? Do we reboot? Do we get new characters? Do we get new actors to play these characters? Do we have a son or daughter take over the property, which is a thing you often see now? Look at uh, Terminator Dark Fate. Fell on its face, of course. They suckered people into the movie by saying John Connor was going to be in it, and then they take him out just as fast. And then it turns into a soft reboot. I myself don't really care. I thought the movie was fine. I was on board with more Terminator films because I'd already been soured by Terminator since number three. The last three movies before Dark Fate were such trash that I was just looking for a decent action movie. There's really only two good Terminator films, and that's it. Everything else is just money being made. Arnold even admitted that in Terminator 3, he just took the money. He got like a $30 million paycheck. Because James Cameron, who wanted nothing to do with it, told Arnold to do it for the money. Because then he said, like, there's going to be a point where this isn't going to be so easy for you. And what he means is, of course, what we're seeing. Actors are getting older. They're aging out of roles. Except for Tom Cruise, who will, he'll live forever, I guess, and just keep, just keep doing his thing, which I'm okay with. I wrote down some other characters that are either based on a property that came out before, like a book or a show or whatever, or they're their own brand new things. Just to give you something to think about. We got Sigourney Weaver in Alien. She was in four Alien films, I believe. And I think she recently came out and said she's done. She's not doing any more. She's getting too old. The ship has sailed. She was going to be in one a couple years back. I think it was the director that did District 9 was attached to one and it fell through. And then... Ridley Scott wanted to take over his own property again. So Ripley is no more. Would you like to see that redone? Would you like to see a new Ripley actress? I personally wouldn't. I personally think Alien's fantastic. Alien and Aliens. And I don't mind some of the other sequels even. But I just don't need to see any more of it. Leave it. Leave it as an old book that you put on a shelf. An old Blu-ray or whatever that you can look to dust off once in a while, show the grandkids. They may not appreciate it like you, and that's perfectly fair. These movies, especially when it's sci-fi or special effects, they're going to age. And they're not going to age well in almost every single instance. <laughs> they're shooting Deadpool 3. Or they were. It's been shut down now because of the strikes going on. Hugh Jackman's back. This is not a spoiler. That's how they announced this. It's going to be a road trip type comedy. I was torn. And I think a lot of people were because Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart had a beautiful, flawless send-off in Logan. The final chapter for that character. Hugh Jackman has played Wolverine for like three decades over the span of, I don't even know, six, seven, eight films he's shown up in here and there. And Patrick Stewart, just as many. And so it kind of sucked seeing both of them. Again, this is where I go back and forth. Part of me is like, oh, awesome. I, I like those guys. But then in the other parts, me like, no, wh why? They, it was so good. It, just leave it. Patrick Stewart showed up in a, as a cameo in Doctor Strange 2. And he's killed off incredibly quickly. I hated that whole sequence. Because they put in all these fan favorites or casting choices and just destroyed it. What was the point? It just didn't do anything other than make people bummed out. I thought. I, don't know, I, I might be alone on that one. But again, it takes away from the sacrifice made in Logan. Where we see these characters go. It, it was a touching experience. But now because of the multiverse and all this bullshit... Oh, they can come back. This is another version. And I think that's what they're saying with Logan in Deadpool 3. He's not the same Wolverine that we've seen. Or he is, but he's from the earlier timeline. I don't know. I just, it's going to be a hard, hard one for me to watch, I think. And they have, they have a lot to prove here. Doesn't mean they can't. And then people say, well, Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. You can't replace him. They will replace him. There's no question. This is a character that's based on comics, that's spanned multiple shows, collectible cards, movies. 
I, I there's zero percent chance we won't get a new version of Wolverine at one point. I remember when Mel Gibson back in the day was supposed to play Wolverine, years before the Hugh Jackman thing, and Mel Gibson is nuts. He would have been a freaking awesome Wolverine. So it's not like there isn't other actors that I don't think can do it. It again goes back to the Gene Wilder thing, I think, for me and others, where it just feels almost like a gut punch. Hugh Jackman did make that character his own. Yes, he was way too tall. Yes, he was a lot calmer than the character from the, the comics and the shows. But that was his interpretation. That's what he brought to the table, and it worked really damn well. And to recast him so quickly, it just seems, it's just, it's brutal, you know? Give it some time. Let us, let us, let us mourn the loss of Wolverine. But then the other part of me thinks that's selfish. That's not fair. There's not, not everyone liked Hugh Jackman's interpretation. Not everyone thought that that was the gold standard. So let them have their version. You know, we reboot Batman every four or five years, it seems like. We've done Spider-Man several times. We've had multiple Supermans now. Why is, you know, why is Logan off the table? And it's more, I think, a testament to how much people cared about that character and how, how he was portrayed by Hugh Jackman than anything else. And that's not to discredit, you know, Michael Keaton as Batman or, or uh, Val Kilmer or... Christian Bale or George Clooney. Everybody loves George Clooney as Batman. I think that he was the, the peak. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Maybe not that one. I brought up Stallone. Are we going to get a Rocky reboot? Are we going to get a Rambo reboot? Dear God, I hope not. I really do think some characters are sacred. I, I really do think that some of them can just be left alone. Bruce Willis. Die Hard. John McClane himself. Obviously, he's incredibly, you know, he's got a disease now. It's not going well, and that is awful. So he's not going to be coming back for one last ride. We're not going to be seeing an 80-year-old John McClane picking up the gun for one last run, you know? He's not going to be going back to Nak Nak <laughs> what is it, Nakatomi Plaza looking up and saying, this feels familiar. Argyle, bring the car around. We got a job to do. Uh, the Twinkie Cop is back again. Sergeant Al Powell. No. No, wait. And they they already threatened us. They already said they were maybe going to do a Die Hard reboot. And that was years ago when Fox was still a thing and it wasn't bought by Disney. I was clenching hard. It's like, don't you dare do this. Don't you recast John McClane as a younger dude. Why? The whole point of John McClane's character is that he was... An older gentleman, not old by any means, but middle-aged. He's seen some shit. He's been through hard times in the world. He's kind of a blue-collar, salt-of-the-earth guy. He has, a, he has baggage with his wife. He's got two kids. And he's just trying to make it through the day. Bad stuff happens, and this everyman has to get out of the situation. That's, that's damn fun. That's compelling stuff. That's interesting stuff. To see a young buck, John McClane, going through like going through the um, the police academy and having to do his first job on the streets, going down alleyways. No, I don't I don't want that. Please, God. It's gonna be Timothy Chalamet who plays him. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. Huh, that's a good line. I should remember that. Winks at the camera. Yuck. This doesn't just fall on action either. Look at comedies. Jim Carrey as Ace Ventura. Jim Carrey as The Mask. Why does it say Ventura? Ventura. Ventura? Why can't I remember how to say Ace Ventura? Yeah, Ventura. Okay, anyway. Jim Carrey is Ace Ventura. Fuck, <laughs> I can't even... Jim Carrey is Ace Ventura. Pet Detective. Jim Carrey is The Mask. They tried doing a shitty sequel to The Mask with Jamie Kennedy. Are you out of your mind? Anybody remember Mask 2? Awful. Awful film. Again, The Mask, I don't believe, started as a Jim Carrey vehicle. I think that that is based on an older thing, a, a novel or a comic or something. I, I really don't know about that one. I do know this. You're going to be hard-pressed to find someone that does a better performance than Carrey himself. Ace Ventura, again, champions that. He owns that role. Or these SNL characters like... Uh, Austin Powers, based off some stuff in Mike Myers' head. Wayne's World. We're going to get a Wayne's World down the road. 
We will if Hollywood looks at it and says, there's money in these hills. There's money with this property. How do we utilize it? Nostalgia is a, is a tricky drug for people. They claim they don't want it, but then they go out and see it. Let's, let's briefly wind down by some food for thought. I talked about actors. I talked about possible solutions, which is to do the soft reboot. If you really have to use the property's name, maybe just sunset the characters, pass it on to the kids. Scream did that. Halloween, to an extent, did that with Jamie Lee Curtis. Although I think that they just kind of wrapped it up nicely. If you like that movie or not. Regardless, Jamie Lee Curtis had a, a fitting end to her character. Jurassic Park. The Jurassic World movies kind of blow. The first one's solid and they just get worse. But they tied in the Jurassic Park characters with it. Gave some of them conclusions as well, even though we didn't need it. So there's ways that they're doing these that kind of work, are less insulting, but for the most part, they're, they're pretty ham-fisted and pretty forced. My suggestion, though, is leave some of these characters, leave some of these properties alone. They tried doing a Han Solo spinoff solo with a different actor. I didn't care for the movie that much. I didn't hate it, but I, I have no desire to watch it. And the guy was fine, but he was no Harrison Ford. Regardless of what someone tells you, he was no Harrison Ford. Leave it. Leave the character alone. We have him. He's there. He's locked in place. He's in our memories. We can choose to do with that what we will. Pass it down to generations. Or we just sit with it and grow old with it. And that's okay. Not everything needs to keep on going. Uh, Ghostbusters was another one where they tried to replicate it. They tried to get that magic back. But they swung a different direction. They said, okay, if the boys can do it, let's see if the ladies can do it again for a new generation. They did not. That movie's pretty awful. And so then what did they do? They did the other thing on the other end of it. Okay, we tried going opposite. Let's go back to nostalgia, Ghostbusters Afterlife. We're going to bring the old dogs back for one more ride. Bill Murray's going to fucking hold a, a, a blaster whether he wants to or not. He's got that proton pack on. And he's going to do this movie after refusing to do Ghostbusters 3 for three or four decades. He's back. I didn't care for Afterlife either, by the way. I know people really like it, and that's fine. But I think a lot of it has to do with the emotional ending. And it's not because of the character Egon. It's because of the actor being dead, Harold Ramis. And the, the movie really, really pandered to that. Really played that up. And that felt like a disingenuous thing. It felt like something that was more about the actor and less about the character. Godfather. You want to see a Godfather remake? I'm guessing most people will shake their heads no. The Shining. Based on a book. Stephen King doesn't even like the movie. It would, it would be in his wheelhouse to remake it if he wanted. I give myself a very hearty head shake no on that one as well. Jaws. It probably will happen at some point. And that would be that would be kind of sad to me because Jaws is that's like the playbook right there. So many movies, horrors, thrillers, whatever, have not only mimicked the presentation of Jaws, keeping the the villain in the shadows for the majority of the film, but they've parried it, they reference it. It's a timeless movie. Does that mean it has an age? Of course not. But everything ages. Humans, movies, art, it, it, it all gets older. Different mediums come along, ways to improve things, ways to enhance things. But there's, there, there should be some respect given, I think, by the performances and by the films. And that's where I stand. Don't remake these movies. They, they just genuinely should not be touched. And then, of course, The Thing, which they have remade, which is the funny part. The original thing came out in, I don't know, the 40s or some shit. And then you have the late 70s, early 80s one with Kurt Russell, which is fan-freaking-tastic. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And then they did another version of the thing. I didn't even see it. I haven't seen it, so I can't speak to the quality. I think it's a prequel. It's the same name, though, because they like to do the bad naming in Hollywood as well. Again, I didn't watch it. Maybe it's fine. But why? You know? To what end does it serve? 
Okay, those are just a few examples of actors, of movies, and I was just kind of thinking about it all because of Indiana Jones, because I saw that interview with Gene Wilder, and, and I just got to thinking about it. Like, you know, where is the line? Where do we draw it as fans of film? Where do we draw it as, you know, appreciators of the art form as well? What works for us doesn't work for everyone. We'll probably get another version of The Hunger Games at one point. We already know that Harry Potter is being rebooted for Max with a new cast. They'll probably dust off some of the old guys, have them come back as teachers or a glorified cameo. They'll probably use the iconic music at some in some way to, you know, fuel that nostalgia, but at the same time they want to pretend this is a brand new thing. They want they want to take it in a different direction. So they're going to marry the two things. That's my prediction. But who knows? I'm not a big fan of that. But I have to separate on this instance. I love the Harry Potter movies. There's people that don't. They're avid book readers. I've read the books. I love the books as well. I understand there's differences. But I don't get bothered by them. I think they work very well in the movie. Outside of the, the last movie, which didn't really explain some of the stuff that was in it. Where you kind of had to read the book. Like how we got the broken mirror. But I don't want to go into all of that. Still love it. Still one of my favorite franchises ever. The fact that they were able to go from beginning to end. With almost all the same cast. Outside of ones that died and had to be replaced. Which is depressing. And the fact that the quality continued to stay consistently good. Or not great in most instances. It's, it's really a testament. And they had different directors every time. I really should do a Harry Potter episode of this. I think that, that would be fine. Maybe rank them and, and talk about them. Or I'll do it on one of my I'll do it on one of my lives. That's kind of what I've been doing lately, is I will do a ranking of a movie property, give you my best and worst, give you a little breakdown of each of the films individually, and chat with the, the viewers as it's going. The lives are on my YouTube channel, Adam Does Movies, every Tuesday and every Friday night. I go at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually runs an hour, hour and a half, whatever, you know, whatever we're into that night. However frisky we feel, we might go a little longer. This goes up, as, as you know, on Mondays. Every single Monday, I put out the Adam Does Movies podcast. It goes up on Spotify and it goes up on iTunes or Apple. I, I never know what it's on. Apple Podcasts? I say it wrong every single time. At some point, I'm going to get it. Wherever you listen to podcasts, is probably going to be goes up at 9 in the morning. I also do a live watch on YouTube at around, I don't know, I've been changing the times up. I, I think 11 o'clock works pretty well for everyone. So I'll probably do 11 o'clock live. If you're on YouTube, you're, you're listening to me talk right now and you're looking and you're saying, wow, it's 11.33. He wasn't joking. This went live when he said it was going to. All right, that's the show. If you like what I'm doing, Keep in mind, this is a one-man operation. I have a full-time job. I have a family. I am the John McClane everyman right here of YouTube. I do it all. And I work my butt off. So, if you like the podcast, if you like the channel in general, if you like me a little bit, maybe think about supporting the channel at Adam Does Movies via Patreon. So, it's patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. There's a couple different tier levels. There's a $1, there's a 10 a 30 even goes up to 100 if you're really feeling generous. And you get great perks along the way. You can also do the same thing via the YouTube join button. Get the same perks. Get some little emotes to put next to your name. It's a good time. Everyone wins here, I think. All right, that's the show. Let me know if you're watching on YouTube in the comments what you thought about this. If you agree, disagree, everything's up for grabs. Let's remake. Let's do more remakes. What less? Uh, let me know. I want to hear about it. Like the video, please. Subscribe to the podcast or right here on YouTube to the channel. Tell everyone about it. I like to grow. I like to get a bigger audience. And only you can help me do that. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. All right. Take care.